Hi and welcome to Minotroid Diorama. This is the final video in the Asuka Shaman Firefly build and I'll be covering the finishing touches such as stowage, mud effects and some streaking. My weakest areas in modelling are probably figure painting and stowage. I have painted a figure for this tank. I've got some footage of it and I may or may not show you the footage, depends on how much time I've got. So those are the two things I'm trying to work on this year. Also, I'll be doing some dioramas for the tanks that I've already built, which I will, once I've finished, I'll do some videos on the construction and also figure painting. Anyway, on with today's video. In this footage here, I'm building a, or making a camouflage net. I'm using some kitchen roll with some PVA wood glue, and I'll fold this up. This is to bulk out the meshing. The meshing that I'm using is from, it's medical gauze, which I've got off eBay and then what I'll do is I'll stick the medical gauze to the kitchen roll, roll it up and then wrap some string around it for the tie-offs. Sometimes I put wire in so that it's a little bit more poseable. Then once the glue is dry I'll remove the wire, spray the whole thing, the desired clear, in this case it would be green and then add some masking tape a uh, very thin one millimeter masking tape around where the wire was or the string was to make the tie down bolt uh, tie down belts. Once I've done that, I've made up some ammunition boxes, 17 pounder ammo boxes that I've got from a mini art kit. I think it's mini art. I'll link it below. They've been painted and weathered, and here they're placed on a piece of A4 paper that I've soaked in water and PVA wood glue. A little square that I've cut out leaving it to go soft and then you can fold it up the way you want it, put it onto the vehicle using PVA glue and water to fold it round and then just mop up the excess with a clean brush. Then here I'm putting PVA glue onto the actual ammo boxes. Then I place a damp piece of A4 paper on again that I've cut to size and soaked in the solution. Try not to cover up the entire bottom canvas so I've got some colour paint in both different colours so it just gives it a little bit of variety and then just folding it and forming it using a damp paintbrush again removing any excess water off with a dry paintbrush afterwards and just leave it to set then once the glue is dry or nearly dry I paint it with some just standard black paint using undercoat getting underneath all the creases I do it before it's completely dry because I can lift up the edges and paint underneath so you get all the all the paper covered and it's easier than trying to do when it's dry because you've got to try and avoid getting it on the actual tank if you do get it on the tank just use a damp brush and wipe it off I'll also use some oil washes later to actually blend the canvas into the tank itself so it doesn't stand out as much the paints used were Black Primer, which was 70602, and Canvas, which is 70314, both Vallejo, and the canvas is Panzer Aces. Once I painted the bottom canvas, I decided to paint the top one, Olive Drab, which was probably a stupid idea, as the tank is Olive Drab, pretty much. So I changed that to a grey colour, which I just mixed some white paint in with a black primer. Again, just trying to avoid getting the paint on the lower canvas and also the uh, ammo boxes and the tank itself. Just going nice and steady, covering up all the details. Not all the details, sorry. Covering up all the surface. Once the acrylic's dry, I move on to oil paints and I lighten or highlight and emphasise the canvas covers with oil paints using a lighter dark, a lighter grey and a darker grey on the grey one and a brownie colour on the bottom canvas. I've also made a small crate with some potatoes and carrots in which I added to the, the rear stowage and I've also tied it off with some string which I did after I finished the weathering on the lower hull. But here are some close-ups of what the stowage looked like when it was done. Then I continue with the oil work and do some dirt effects around the stowage which 
helps to blend the stowage in with the tank but also helps to hide up any white bits of the paper that I've missed. Also, I this is like a stippled mud effect because the rain's fallen on it as opposed to streaking, which I'll do after I've done the stippling. And I'll continue the stippled mud down the back of the tank and streak the back and the sides. It's meant to look like a tank that's been dirty and has got wet and it's rained and streaked the mud down the side, which is why the top of the tank ends up being lighter than the bottom uh, it's just the effect I was going for it might look like it's not kind of a finished tank but that's the effect that I was looking for so it's got dirty and the rain's washed the mud off but I'm just using here I'm just using a couple of browns and the white to do the the mud stippling as well as putting the mud off the top down the back I do some sort of dot filters using the mud colors so that you've got mud at different heights around the vehicle in different intensities. Once I've done that, I move around the front of the tank and do the same with the mud, but so that it's coming off raised detail. So like where the transmission cover meets the main hull, there's a bit of a lip. So I concentrate a bit of mud down there and the streaking coming from it, as well as doing streaking from mud that's splashed up and been washed down. I just use the same oils over the entire vehicle. I also apply some dot filters to the, the front of the tank just lighting up the colour and a bit more modulation on the front. I concentrate the, the streaking on the areas like I said earlier where the transmission cover meets the hull but also where the light guards are mounted to the hull also the edges of the hatch bulge here so that the water would run down the hatch bulge and then drip off where it stops going down if that makes sense. So where the, the bulges end on the front of the turret, the front of the hull, sorry, do the streaking down from there because that's where water would naturally come from. And also concentrate mud build up where the front mud guards meet the upper hull and the streaking will be more pronounced nearer the top so the dirt will be pulled down and then it would run out of let's say for argument's sake pigment so there'd be less colour in the mud as it got lowered down so the streaking would be more visible towards the top of the hull but then on the bottom where you've had mud splash up you can just do different heights of mud or brown streaking because that's where the mud splashed up to and it's been run off. I then repeat the same process on the side of the hull, adding dirt and mud deposits to the top of the tank and then dragging down the sides. Also doing some dot filters to the side of the tank for streaking and then repeating the process of the mud. So letting each layer dry before I apply a subsequent layer until I'm happy with the effect streaking with dirt and then doing the green and yellow streaks to fade the paint out just continuing along repeating the process until I'm just finally happy with the way it looks I like oil work it can give you a lot of different very good effects I use quite a lot in all of my modeling to be fair that the oil work it, I do find it quite satisfying I I like to do a, a first set of um, like environmental streaking as I would call it before I put decals on, so do the chipping and then do some streaking to mute down the chipping effects a little bit, and also so that the decals don't get discolored by the by the streaking. And then I'll go on add the decals and then do more streaking afterwards. But I like to do, as I would call it, environmental streaking, so sort of modulation and making the green change or the colour that you've got on the vehicle change a little bit as well as doing oil washes to change the hue of colours I like to do streaking to give it a little bit more I suppose you'd call it streaked modulation but yeah I like oil work, it's, it's very satisfying again you've got to think about where you, you place the, the mud effect F for example on this tank you've got the side armour 
uh, which underneath you'd get because it sticks out more you'd get mud build up under there um, you'd get mud build up in the there's a piece of metal on the lower hull that they used to attach the side armor to or the side skirts which would be which would stand off and you'd get a build up in there because it stands off um, you'd also get splatter going up at different heights closer towards the back of the tank here I'm localizing the mud effect towards the rear and the lower part of the hull and then I'll streak that off until I'm happy with it and basically just think about where the mud would be and how you place the mud on the vehicle once I'm happy with the lower hull I move on to the running gear and making the bogus match in with the lower hull so the whole all, I've got to try and get all the mud effects to work together which is why I'm using the same colours although I used acrylic streaking on the lower hull once all the oil work's been done I'll go back onto the upper hull and do some acrylic streaking as well but I'm just trying to here to blend in the running gear so that the bottom of the tank looks like the hull of the tank and just make the whole thing come together again just using the same oils that I used on the upper hull I also use some pigments which will match the pigments that I used on the lower hull and just making the whole thing the story all come together the most important thing to remember when you're weathering is that you're, you're telling the story of the vehicle and it's just trying to make all of the elements come together that's what's important that you try and use the same products or at least the same colours which is why I like to use Vallejo because their pigments they also do a paint colour that matches a pigment as in they'll do um, a, a model air and a model colour paint that will match the same colour as one of their pigments so you can blend it all in together which is another good reason for using oil paints because if you've got a near enough colour because of all the blending it then looks like the colour that you want to represent or you can make it look like that colour so it's just you're just trying to tell a story and bring the entire vehicle together so it looks like one complete vehicle that looks like it should look or looks how you want it to look the most important thing to remember as well is that it's not always what other people say it should look like as long as you're happy with what, you, what you've done then you can be happy whether people criticize it as long as you're happy and if you've done anything wrong you've learned from those mistakes that is the main thing to take from modeling you are always improving and if people criticize if it's constructive then take on what they're saying if it's not then try and ignore it i moved back around to the rear of the tank with the pigments again just building up mud effects and stuff and looking like the mud's been thrown up from the back of the tank and just blending it in giving it a bit of texture i then add a little more water to the the pigments that i've been using and use it to do a splashing effect around the vehicle i use a paintbrush and a cocktail stick and you you run you flick the brush bristles with the cocktail stick to make the the splash effect on the on the vehicle i do this all around the vehicle the back the sides the front focusing more towards the back also making sure you get some on the lower hull you can add a little bit of wet effects to it so you've got wet and dry um splash of the mud also change the tone or the colors that you're using so you've got more than one color just to give it added variety and just give it a little bit of spice Once I've finished with the splashing, I take the turret off and I dirty up the inner, or the inner part of the turret ring. So where the side of the hull comes up, you'll find you get a lot of mud collecting around there, and then just dirty that up. So when you look at the kit, you, it looks dirty. Just modulate that again with the same colour doors as I used before. Once all the oil work was done, I did some acrylic streaking to the rear. Of the tank using the same colors as the lower hull but i've lost the footage but basically i just streaked the rear i'd say half of the tank and the back of the tank using the acrylics with paint retardant and streaked from the bottom up 
so the mud splash up onto it and run down I put slightly too much paint on and had to remove some of it once it was dry and I used Vallejo um, paint thinners to remove it you've got to be careful doing acrylic streaking because you can go too far and the only way you can remove it is by doing that or just leaving it but luckily I managed to get what I wanted to get off with the acrylic sorry with the paint thinners it's just quite a risky process doing acrylic streaking which is why I don't want to use oils but because they would match in with the low hull I thought I'd, I'd use them I've got um, some VMS clean slate which is good for cleaning paintbrushes or removing paint but it's a bit more vigorous than paint thinners and you've just got to be careful if you are doing it because you can remove the actual paint itself so just be careful when you're doing or if you do acrylic streaking but that's the end of the video i hope you've enjoyed it i'll be doing a diorama like i said for this vehicle um i hope you've liked the video if you have please consider subscribing leaving a like and a comment i'll be happy to answer any comments you've got and i'll leave you with some stills thanks goodbye and see you next week